right, welcome everyone. Welcome to Evergreen Valley United Methodist Church. It's November 19th, 2023. Uh, come let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving, extol him with music and song. For the Lord is great, a great God, the great king of all gods. Please join us as we sing, as we gather the steadfast love of the Lord. As we gather, may your spirit work within us. As we gather, may we glorify your name. Knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship, we'll be blessed because we came. We'll be blessed because we came. As we gather, may your spirit work within us. As we gather, may we glorify your name. Knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship, we'll be blessed because we came. We'll be blessed because we came. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. to see all of you here today. Um, for those who may not know who I am, I'm Reverend Craig Yoshihara, and I am honored to be the pastor here at Evergreen Valley United Methodist Church. We have got a ton of stuff going on at our church, um, but first and foremost, I want to remind everyone that today is the last day to donate toward Turkey Truck. Now, you guys have heard in the past how we've been doing Turkey Truck for how many years has it been, Tom? 30 or so years, right? And so um, this year, we would love for you to help out um, in whatever way you can. Uh, if you'd like to help donate toward Turkey Truck, which helps to give full Thanksgiving meals, turkey, dressing, and, and all the fixings um, to families in need, uh, just simply, um, either you can do it online. So folks, if you're at home, you're doing it online, um, just go to, to our website under Give. And um, as you go through the, the steps uh, in the memo line, or the equivalent of the memo line, just put turkey truck. For all of those of you here in the room, if you're writing a check, um, or uh, just put turkey truck on your check. Um, and if you need an envelope, um, come see one of us, and we'll get you an envelope, and just put turkey truck on the front, just so we know where it's supposed to go. But you'll be doing a great, uh, a great, wonderful thing, helping families in need to have a full turkey dinner in time for Thanksgiving. Um, we've also got today the faith and family trip to Disneyland. Uh, we're going to have a meeting after church. Uh, we'll probably, right, are you guys doing choir today or no? Okay. Uh, we'll be meeting in the classrooms in the back and, uh, it shouldn't be really long, but I'm just going to go over really quickly 
the, the rough ins and outs of um, what the trip will entail and about, and about how much it'll cost, and you'll, you'll get a handy flyer to help remind you. Um, also, and, and Gwen would be very mad if I did not mention this, um, poinsettias for Christmas are um, on sale. There are these forms that were inside of your bulletins this morning, and uh, you have until December 3rd, December 3rd, um, to, um, pu to purchase one. And after Christmas Eve worship, you are welcome to take it home with you. Um, but they will be, uh, but they'll be up here, and it'll make our sanctuary look even more wonderful uh, as we celebrate uh, cookies and carols together and Christmas Eve. And speaking of cookies and carols, everyone who comes will get um, one of these awesome cookies. And I know you can't see it if you're this far away, but uh, it has our logo on the cookie. And uh, we have two different flavors. This one is milk chocolate with a white sugar cookie. And we also have um, white chocolate with an Oreo cookie base. And they're both wonderful. So um, if you come, everyone who comes will get one. And so please, hopefully that's an additional incentive for you to be here for that event. There's even more stuff going on. Uh, I'm going to refer you to the back of your bulletin to, to read all about it and to find out what else is happening here at the church. Otherwise, uh, worship would go really long, and I hate making these people stand up. Um, so please, uh, as we get going into worship, um, we're going to listen to the wonderful singing of our praise team and the music that Red will be providing this morning, and we hope that you will enjoy and be fulfilled in worship today. Please rise or stand if you are able. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most on High, proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. Please join us to God be the glory. <clears throat> to God be the glory, great things he hath done. So lovely the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life for redemption to win, and opened a life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the byless offender who truly Jesus, a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Great things he has taught us, great things he has done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear Voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. All right, this is one of my favorites. Um, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face shine upon you and be gracious upon you. The Lord turns his face towards you and gives you peace. Please help us in singing, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not, thy compassions, they fail not. 
Join me in the unison prayer. Christ our Lord and Savior, help to keep us on the straight and narrow. Guide us through the narrow door. Lead us through the narrow gate. As we move forward in life, let your teachings and your life example inspire us to lead our lives in the same way. Amen. You may be seated. I feel, I feel a little bit like uh, Mr. Rogers, you know? Right, I love Mr. Right, it's a total Mr. Rogers vibe. It's that sweater, right? So, yeah, I feel like I should sing that, that song, right? <laughs> okay, so, um, you guys know what holiday's coming up, right? Ah, see, they all said Christmas, which is not wrong. But um, like much of culture today, we kind of skip right over Thanksgiving, right? Okay, so um, when I think of Thanksgiving, um, I always think of pie. So, okay, which one would you like, cherry or apple? Cherry? Okay, what would you like? Apple. Cherry? Okay. And I have enough, so don't worry. Apple. You have apple? Okay. Here you go. Would you like one? Uh, which one would you like? Cherry. Okay. And would you like one, Declan? I'd like a you want cherry? Okay. Mm-hmm. Cherry's very popular. It's all about the apple. It is. It's all about the apple. Would you like one too? Which one would you like? You want one? <laughs> all right, there you go. Okay. So um, later on, with um, whoever brought you, so the pies have more um, meaning than just Thanksgiving, and um, we're going to talk about that later, but I'm going to leave that as a surprise for all of them. So you can ask someone what we talked about, okay? But um, did you know that actually, um, what do you think? What do you think is the most popular pie at Thanksgiving? Apple, pumpkin, sweet potato, pumpkin, pumpkin, apple, sweet potato. Actually, um, sweet potato is the most popular pie in Georgia and Alabama. Um, And there are a whole bunch of different pies that are that are the most popular in different places. But overwhelmingly, pumpkin pie is the most popular pie of all time. It's more popular than any other pie by at least two times. It's crazy, because personally, I hate pumpkin pie. <laughs> See, thank you, Emerson. Um, yeah, I'm not, a big, I'm not a big pumpkin pie fan, so when this time, uh, when we used to go to Cassie's grandmother's house, she used to always make, she always had pumpkin pie, but she always had pecan pie, which I love. Who likes pecan pie? Anyone else? All right. Um, and she made this wonderful like lemon meringue pie. Um, and Cassie's grandma makes the, the best lemon anything. And so um, I was always so happy that she thought of us non-pumpkin pie people. <laughs> so um, I'm grateful for, um, for people who are like me, don't like pumpkin pie, and think about us at this time of the year. I'm going to ask you, um, each to name one thing you're thankful for. It could be anything. So I'm going to start on this end with Avery. Victoria. Okay, Victoria. She's grateful for her cat, Pearl. Awesome. Okay. What about you, Avery? Hmm, I'm grateful to have loving grandparents. Aw. That's aw. Extra dessert for Avery tonight. Yeah. Um, Declan? <laughs> Wesley. Uh, oh, that's awesome. Good education. I love it. Emerson? Oh, very nice. What? Oh, that's nice. Family. I love that. Um, I'm grateful for my family, too. 
um, both Cassie and Emma, and also um, my parents and my sisters who have been very supportive over the years. Uh, as we remember Thanksgiving, it's really good to keep in mind that um, we have a lot to be grateful for. Even in times when it seems like things are rough, that there are still blessings that we have to be grateful for. And so often we just kind of blow by Thanksgiving, much like rest of culture right now, right? I mean, uh, as soon as Halloween, even before, the week before Halloween, I already saw Christmas stuff going up in stores. Anyone else notice that? Right? So it just totally blows by Thanksgiving. Um, and, and today I think Thanksgiving is known more for the Detroit Lions football game. Um, <laughs> Lots of food and turkey, but um, just like, yeah, Black Friday sales, but just like um, with Christmas, you know, the, the reason that we gather is to give thanks. Um, and for us as Christians, to give thanks to God for, for the blessings that we have. So we're going to pray about that today for all the things you guys lifted up, but also just in general uh, to be thankful for what we have. So... All right, you guys ready? If you guys will all help us out and just pray along with us, um, I'll say something and then just repeat after me. You guys ready? All right, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for my blessings. Thank you for the people who love me. Thank you for my church. But most of all, thank you for coming for me. Thank you for everything we lift it up today, and the things that are in our hearts we did not share. Help me to have an attitude of gratitude all year long. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Hey, thanks a lot, you guys. I appreciate all of you. So. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, and Declan, happy birthday. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. So come see me after worship. I've got a card for you, okay? Thank you. Okay. Yeah, we have, um, it was both uh, Declan and Kylie's birthday this week. And so, in fact, I think, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's Kylie's birthday today. So um, when you see them, wish them happy birthday. All right. So as we continue in worship and we get ready for prayer, um, I want to invite you to... Um, Lift up those things that are on your hearts that are weighing upon you to let them go to the Lord. Um, to lift up praise and thanksgiving for the things that, that we're blessed by. Uh, and if you just want to share a general thanksgiving for something, please feel free to do that. So I'm going to, if anyone would like to share something with us today? No? Oh, there's Marilyn. Thank you, Marilyn. <laughs> Well, you know, it would, it would it'd be a very short newsletter this, Pray this for week. for Le Levina Smith, who's in a convalescent hospital, I understand. Yeah, thank you. And I hope Jan Roll is doing better. Thank you. Lord, hear our prayers. You want to add? Okay, I'll come over to you, Ron. She just talked about Levina, and I visited her a couple days ago. Um, she has a great spirit. Um, fractured her back and took a bad fall back and her leg and she's there for two weeks and uh, I'm not sure she's going to be home or, or uh, in another facility but uh, God bless her she's special thank you Lord hear our prayers I found right over you Camille Uh, good morning, church. Good morning. Hyacinth and I went to visit with Lavina on Thursday, I think it was, and she is doing really, really good. I watched her transfer herself from the bed to the wheelchair oh, wow. and was wheeling herself down the hall to go for physical therapy, so you know she's doing well. Secondly, um, Hyacinth isn't here today. Her son, one of her second son is hospitalized. Oh, no. And they're still trying to determine what's the problem. So she's asking for prayers for her entire family at this time, including herself. Thank you. Definitely. Lord, hear our prayers. Oh. 
I would like to thank everybody for the prayers uh, for my family when they were in, in uh, physical problems. They're all well and healthy and okay. having a joyous time this holiday. Thank you. Appreciate it. Lauren, here are prayers. Anyone else who would like to share something? Just want to make sure I'm not missing anybody back there. Okay. All right. Well, let's go ahead then and lift these things up to the Lord together. If you'll bow your heads with me. Gracious God Almighty, we just give thanks for the many ways in which you continue to bless our lives. In this season of Thanksgiving, it's a nice reminder for us to always be thankful for how much you do for us each and every day, for the gifts you give us that help us to bless others, for the ways in which you bless us through family and friends, through the ways in which you continue to influence our lives and guide us through the Holy Spirit. We just lift these things all up to you. For the things that we shared together today in worship, Lord, we lay them at your feet, and we know that they are in good hands with you. That how you see the world is different from how we see it, and that we trust in you, Lord, uh, in all that we do. In the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, we say this prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right. Thank you, everyone. Oh, and I, I wanted to uh, thank Red. He always uh, provides really wonderful prayer music as we enter into that time together. So thank you, Red, so much for your contribution, too. Oh, yeah. Do we have music? Okay. <laughs> Didn't want to jump the gun. Okay. Good morning. Our scripture reading today is Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, and I give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In a few days, I'll be eating a tremendous meal at my sister's house, um, she hosts us uh, twice a year. It shakes my whole family like on every major holiday. Um, but we, we go down twice a year, and so for Thanksgiving and for New Year's, she always has this big spread of food. Oh, so the sister I'm talking about is the one on your left um, in the, would you say it's yellow? Yellow dress? Um, that's my sister Karen. She's the, the older of my two sisters. And... Uh, I don't know how she does it, um, but she does the, the whole thing, turkey stuffing, um, and my, my brother-in-law's famous cranberry sauce. I don't like cranberry sauce, but, but out of politeness, I, I tried his, and I loved it. It's like the inside of a pie. It's so good. So um, he, he tells me that he just makes it from the back of the package, and uh, I tried making it from the back of the package, and it does not come out the same. <laughs> so I don't know what magic he does when I'm not there, but I look forward to it every year. Um, 
And I'm always really grateful for it. I, it's, it, I don't know how she does it um, with, with two kids who are now in high school and um, trying to get everything done. It's, it's pretty amazing. One thing that I always love, like I told the kids and like I told you guys, is, is pie. Not pumpkin, but pie. I love a good pie. And apparently I'm not alone, because like, like we shared earlier, the number one holiday for pies is Thanksgiving, followed closely by number two, Christmas. So apparently a lot of you like pie, at least at Thanksgiving and Christmas. And for me, it's like the, the trinity of, of desserts, right? Pie, ice cream, and cookies. That's like my holy trinity. <laughs> so having like pie a la mode is like heaven, you know? But there's one kind of pie that I know we're not going to be having at Thanksgiving. But it's one that I think all of us could do having a slice of every once in a while. And that's humble pie. All of us can use a good slice of humble pie once in a while. Now, I was thinking about this while I was watching Sports Night. Sports Night's one of my favorite TV shows of all time. And uh, in the episode called Six Southern Gentlemen of Tennessee, uh, Dan and Casey are talking, and Dan and Casey are the two guys in the front. Dan and Casey are, are talking, um, and Dan's like, you know, um, Jerome wants us to do more segments on hockey. And he's like, who's Jerome? He's like, the camera guy. He's like, what camera guy? He goes, the camera guy on camera two. That's Jerome. And it becomes really obvious that um, Casey has no idea who these people are. Uh, later on in the episode, he's doing an interview, and he gets complimented on the ties that he wears on the show. And so he, he makes a joke and laughs it off. But later on, uh, this young woman comes into his office and asks if, uh, if, if it's okay if she asks him a couple of questions. And he's like, sure, go ahead. And she, said, uh, she says, what's my name? And he's like, um, I'm sorry, you know, there's so many people who work here, I, I, I don't know. And she goes, who was the number two man in the Boston Red Sox in 1977? And he knew. And he said, you know, I think you hurt the feelings of a woman I work for. And um, she says, Maureen is, is my boss, and it's Maureen who picks out all of your clothes for every show. And he goes, oh, I, I, he goes I know Maureen. And she said, he says, she says, you know, do you know what color this tie is? And he's like, it's gray. She goes, it's gunmetal. He goes, gunmetal has more uh, blue, gray has more white. And he says, do you know which shirt this should go with? And he's like, I'm, he says, I'm really sorry, I, I, I didn't know your name. And she goes, Mr. McCall, you do so much for so many people, and you get so many awards, and all of it's deserved. But when you get credited for something you didn't do, how hard would it be to say, I didn't do that? That's Maureen. And without Maureen, I wouldn't know gunmetal from a hole in the wall. Do you know how often she would play that video for her kids? Do you know how many times that they would sit in front of a TV watching you say that about her? Casey just got served a big slice of humble pie. At the end of the episode, him and Dan start pointing out all the different people who work in the background on the show and give thanks to them for the amazing job that they do. They name them one by one. Um, and if you watch the episode, it's interesting because what they're, the people that they're actually naming are actually the people who work on that actual show. Um, they use their names as you know, staff members, but those are the people who work on the show. And we know that it comes from a place of honesty because Casey realizes that all these people help him and he's blissfully unaware of all that they do. When we give thanks, do we give it from a humble heart? Do we recognize that the things that we are blessed with are not of our own doing, but are on the backs of so many others who went before us? Whether those are the people who, who teach you in school, your parents or grandparents or aunts and uncles who help raise you, your friends who help support you when times are tough, 
the people who write the books and the things that give you the knowledge so that you can succeed. That so often we don't really think about the chain of people around us that make life possible. This is part of my chain of people. Uh, obviously, Cassie and Emma, but my clergy friends, uh, my family, my friends. Uh, and there's a picture of little me with all my little friends. So from when we were young. How often do we think about the people in our lives who've made a difference? Whether they're still with us today, whether they've moved away, far away, or whether they're sitting next to you. How often do we give thanks for all that they have done? None of us can make it on our own. There's really no such thing as a self-made person. We like to think there is, and our society likes to, to encourage us to believe it is. But really, it's always on the backs of other people that we are able to be successful. Someone once wrote, if you want to live in a state of perpetual thanksgiving, you must abide in humility. Humility is a state of mind wherein pride, ego, and haughty self-sufficiency have been crucified with Christ. Humility is a state of mind wherein pride, ego, and haughty self-sufficiency have been crucified with Christ. I know our culture encourages us to have this pull yourself up by your bootstraps mentality, but it denies the reality that we live in a community. Whether we want to or not, right, we live in a community. And it affects us, either for good or for bad, but it does affect how we live. There's a lesson that King David wanted to teach to the people of Israel. And so this morning we're going to read from 1 Chronicles 29, beginning with verse 10. So if you have a Bible and you'd like to pull it out and follow along, if you guys are at home and you'd like to follow along with us, we're going to read from 1 Chronicles 29, beginning with verse 10. I invite you to follow along with us as we read um, together today. Now, prior to this passage, um, David tells the people of Israel that they're going to build a temple to honor God. And he says, it's not going to be built in my time. Solomon is going to be the one who's actually going to build it. But I want to get everything ready for him. I want to make it easy for him to be able to do this a massive project. And so I'm going to ask you to help and donate what you can to this project. So he gives of his own personal fortune. And um, all the people of Israel come and they, they bring what they can. And at the end of the day, um, in, in today's dollars, they donated more than $8 billion worth of gold and more than $243 million in silver. And that doesn't even include all the, the gems, the stone, the bronze, the iron, um, and all the supplies, which, by the way, were provided by the people of Israel to build this amazing temple to the Lord. So when David sees how the people have responded, um, he says this prayer to, to God. And so that's what we're going to read this morning. Uh, if you'll please rise as you're able to, uh, and please feel free to, to stay seated if you need to. Uh, we're going to read this morning from 1 Chronicles 29, starting with verse 10 through 20. So hear now these words. David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly, saying, Praise be to you, Lord, the God of our father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor, for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is a kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generous, generously as this? Everything comes from you, and we have given only what comes from your hand. We are foreigners and strangers in your sight, as were all our ancestors. Our days on earth are like a, a shallow, a shadow without hope. Lord, our God, all this abundance that we have provided for building you a temple for your holy name comes from your hand and all that belongs to you. I know, my God, that you test the heart and are pleased with integrity. 
All these things I have given willingly and with honest intent. And now I have seen with joy how willingly your people who are here have given to you. Lord, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, keep these desires and thoughts in the hearts of your people forever and keep their hearts loyal to you. And give my son Solomon the wholehearted devotion to keep your command, statutes, and decrees, and to do everything to build the palatial structure for which I have provided. Then David said to the whole assembly, Praise the Lord your God. So they all praise the Lord, the God of their fathers. They bowed down, prostrating themselves before the Lord and the king. The word of God for the people of God, and the people said, Thanks be to God. Please be seated. David's model of thanksgiving comes from humility. He praises God, the creator, for, for everything. And he attributes all good things to God. And I loved how he ended it. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you. And we have given you only what comes from your hand. He wants the people of Israel to understand that their blessings come from God and that they should be in an attitude of gratitude toward God for what they have. It would be easy for them, right, to, to pat themselves on the back. I mean, after all, they just contributed in total more than $12 billion toward building this one project. $12 billion. That's gonna be a pretty awesome temple, right? And they could have said, you know, thanks be to God, you know, we're so glad that we did all of this, that we gave all this, you know, for God, yeah, but we did this. But instead, David's like, no, you know, we, we don't deserve any credit. You know, we're just grateful, Lord, and this is our, our way of showing our gratitude, but it really all belongs to you anyway. And he wants that to really seep into the hearts of the people of Israel, you know, to, to realize that that God is there for them and supports them. I think this is an important lesson for Israel, but also for us today. Um, that all we accomplish is really on the backs of others. Like David mentions, right, that God is the God of Abraham and Isaac and Israel to kind of point the way to the fact that, that they weren't there all by themselves. That there were people who came before, who paved the way so that they could be where they are. And that in the midst of it all, that we need to be grateful for that. That our worth is not measured in money or gems or power, uh, but really that it's measured in the love that we give and the love that we get. That's how we know what we're worth. But it seems like over time, as we become more wealthy, we easily forget these lessons. Uh, Patricia Greenfield is a professor at UCLA, and she did a study of linguistics um, from the 1800s to the 2000s. And in her studies, she was looking at uh, word usage and found that as American society got more and more wealthy, that the word get showed up more and more in our vocabulary, and the word give started showing up less and less. We became more individualistic and less about community as we became more wealthy. Um, also, words like individual, self, and unique started to go up, and words like give, obliged, and belong happened less. Now, by itself, that might not seem like a lot. I mean, just a bunch of words, right? But when you couple that with the fact that studies show that people who have less money contribute about 50% more than affluent people to charity. 50% more of their, of their income to charity. It does highlight the fact that as we become more wealthy, we also tend to give less. We forget the lessons from Ecclesiastes. In Ecclesiastes 9 and 11, it says, the race is not to the swift, or the battle to the strong, nor does food come to the wise, or wealth to the brilliant, or favor to the learned, but time and chance happen to us all. We forget that our good fortune 
is not always in our control. That sometimes favor and luck and background and all sorts of things go into who we become. And that for us to sit there and think, I'm so great because I did this, diminishes all the other people in your life that have contributed to who you are. But if we maintain an attitude of humility, we become more grounded and realize that our success is the success of a community and not just ourselves. Thankfulness without humility is like pie without filling. It's just empty. Thankfulness without humility is like pie without filling. It's just empty. One of my favorites. Unfortunately, that's not Cassie's grandmother's pecan pie. But I got to tell you, it's really good. Uh, I, I have a friend, uh, Akiko. She's also a pastor. And my very first church in California, um, she, w- she co-pastored with me. I would always ask her to say a blessing for the food. Because she would have these amazing prayers. Um, she would give, there's Akiko. Uh, she would give prayers for the food, but not just for the food, but she'd give prayers for the farmers who grew the plants that made the food. She'd give thanks to the, the, the ranchers who raised the cows who made the food. She gave thanks to God for the water and the sunshine that made it possible. And it was just amazing. You just felt like every time she prayed, it really connected you to this greater chain of life that we're all a part of. And that for every morsel that appears on your plate, that you didn't do that. You might have cooked it, but there's a whole lot of people who went into making what you have. And that always really helped ground me to realize that I'm, I'm always part of a bigger community in all that I do. So the challenge I'm going to offer you is this. From now until Christmas, and hopefully it'll last beyond that, but from now to Christmas, I would like you to thank one person every day. Like, aloud. I mean, I hope you're praying and thanking God for your blessings, but um, it it could be anybody. It could be be your mom or your child, or it could be the, the mailman who comes and brings the mail. It could be some guy at the grocery store who helps just say, make a point of saying thank you to somebody once a day for something. Just challenge you from now to Christmas, once a day, to say thank you to somebody for something. I think that often the more we say thank you, the more it helps to remind us that we have a lot to be grateful for. Let's face it, we can all stand to eat a little bit of humble pie once in a while. So I'm going to challenge you to make that your Thanksgiving dessert this year. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I'm going to invite our praise team to come back up for for one final song today, um, which is very appropriate. Thank you, Red. I love this. This is going to be great. So if you would um, please join with us as we sing and close out worship this morning. Please rise as we sing our closing song. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because it's given. Jesus Christ, His Son, give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because it's given. Jesus Christ, His Son, and now. Let the weak say I am strong, let the poor say I am rich, because of what the Lord has done for us. And now, let the weak say I am strong. 
I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done. you and keep you now and always. As we go forth into this world, let it be with a heart of gratitude for all that the Lord has given to us. Let us show that gratitude by showing the love of Christ to those around us in whose name that we gather together today. Amen. We'll meet in a few minutes uh, for anyone interested about the, to know more about the Disneyland trip. Um, so just give me a few minutes. Uh, go ahead and talk amongst yourselves and I'll let you guys know.